Good morning, everyone. Um, before we begin, uh, let me just take a moment to again welcome the safe return of uh, Mark Furis, uh, an American Navy a veteran who spent more than two and a half years in captivity in Afghanistan. Um, his return is the culmination of many, many months of tireless and effective work uh, by so many colleagues in, uh, in our government. I especially want to uh, extend thanks to uh, our special uh, presidential envoy for hostage affairs, Roger Carstens, who's actually with Mark uh, as we speak, and to our special representative for Afghanistan, Tom West. Um, many national security professionals across the government gave their all to this effort to get Mark out of captivity and ultimately to, uh, to bring him home. And I want to thank uh, all the people who've worked on this uh, over these many months, who care about Mark, and uh, we're profoundly grateful uh, to them. Uh, the support that we received from our Qatari partners as well um, was key in securing his, uh, his release. Um, Mark's soon going to be reunited with his family. Uh, the president had an opportunity to speak to them a few hours ago. I want the families of Americans who are being arbitrarily detained or held hostage anywhere in the world to know that our commitment to them, to bringing their loved ones home, is resolute, and we will relentlessly continue to focus uh, on doing just that. Um, we'll bring the same determination and focus to those efforts as we brought to the effort to bring Mark Furious out of captivity and home to his loved ones. Um, for the United States, for me personally, there is no higher priority than uh, bringing Americans who are being arbitrarily and unjustly detained or held hostage uh, back home uh, to freedom to their families. Uh, we'll continue to work this relentlessly uh, and secure the release of all Americans who are being unjustly held wherever uh, that's the case. Uh, we, uh, we mean what we say. Mark's family had my word. Every other family has my word. With that, um, I also want to say how pleased we are uh, to be with uh, some extraordinary colleagues uh, today. Um, and it's fitting that we're, we're opening the high-level week here at the United Nations with an event, a conversation, a focus on freedom of expression and uh, freedom of the press. It's also particularly fitting that we're doing it at the Farm Press Center, which actually embodies both of those principles. Um, our commitment, the United States commitment to freedom of expression, freedom of the press is unwavering, uh, and it's unwavering because it's the bedrock of a healthy democracy. Increasingly, though, we see these freedoms as under threat, uh, under threat from censorship, uh, from surveillance, from restrictive laws, from propaganda, abuse of detention, prosecution violence, and we see this quite literally around the world, um, even as we condemn the efforts to restrict freedom of expression and freedom of press, we're determined to do everything we can to uphold them, including with a number of important U.S. programs that we'll have an opportunity to discuss today uh, with our colleagues uh, that, uh, that can do just that. But let me conclude by saying, uh, by saying this, virtually everything that we're doing here this week at the United Nations, the issues that we're putting a spotlight on, from food insecurity uh, to, uh, to climate uh, to, to global health, uh, we couldn't do this without the information, the illumination that freedom of expression and freedom of the press bring to these and every other challenging issue around the globe. The work of the United Nations, uh, the work of our, uh, of our own foreign policy diplomacy um, would be dramatically undermined in a world where freedom of expression and freedom of the press are under threat, under challenge, uh, and decline. So we have a real stake in upholding these principles and making real defending them against those who seek to dilute them, diminish them, eliminate them. Mostly I'm anxious to hear from all of our colleagues uh, who have um, in various ways shown extraordinary courage in upholding these principles uh, around the world. I'm anxious to hear from them, their experiences, uh, and their ideas for what more we can do to support, defend, protect freedom of expression and the press. With that, I thank you.